So this question asks how to rewrite the search function using enrolling to improve its performance. And so what I've shown here is the function after I've implemented unrolling but before I started scheduling it. So you see I just took the code that's part of the loop and made a second copy of it. And so obviously this is naive that, that we don't want the second copy of the label and uh, we don't want this jump because we actually want the code to fall through. So now that we've done that, the key here is what we want to avoid is the stalls resulting from the back-to-back -back execution or the attempted back-to-back -back execution of this load and 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 this load. And that there's room for one instruction in between each of these instructions um, to avoid a stall. And so what we'd like to do is take some of the instructions down in the second iteration and move them up to place them in between these instructions so that we can do useful work those cycles instead of stall stalling. The problem though is you can see that some of these instructions use the same register values as are used by the original iteration. In fact, all of them are using the same uh, register values because they're direct copies of those instructions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to rename these instructions. Um, that We're going to assign them new register values um, and we want to do that in a way that preserves the behavior of this code. And in particular um, What's important is that we change the definition of the value, the, the, the writing to the value, and the reading of that same value to the same register. So for example, I can change this T1 register and assign it to a different one, T4, but I have to make sure that every use of T1, where there's a true data dependence, um, gets changed also. So this t write of t1 is followed by this read of t1 but you can see that that's a different value than this one that this write of t1 never gets read by this instruction because this write overwrites that value so i can assign these both to t4 and i can leave these ones both as t1 um, so we can do this but the other thing too that's important to note is we need to do this in a way that these exits these branches to exit have their values preserved as well. And so what you'll note is that the only value that needs to be preserved is A0, that we're copying A0 to V0 and then returning. And recall that the calling convention is such that at the return point, um, we're basically assuming that all the values in the T registers and the A registers you know, nobody cares about them. So, so I can freely rename the, the T registers um, however I want. And so I'm going to go ahead and rename T2 to T5 down here and T3 to T6. So now there's no longer any potential collisions on those registers. Um, and that leaves us with A0. And so what we need to make sure is that whenever we take one of these branches, we have the correct value of A0. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. It turns out that because there's a dependence between all of these instructions, in order to hoist any of these instructions above this branch, um, we don't want to overwrite the value of A0 that would leave in this branch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this A0 into A1. So every place where I had A0, I'm now going to have A1. So this write of A0 is now a write of A1. And so I change the reads of A1 um, to that. Um, but having done that, I have the problem that when I take this branch now, um, I have the old value of A0. So I'm actually going to add in a new instruction in here. I'm going to add a move 
into register A0 from register A1. And now when if I took this branch then the correct value of A0 is now um, in that register so when I do this move everything's okay. Um, so great. So having done that now I can go about scheduling the code. Um, so there's no reason to change the first instruction in the code. We're still going to keep that as what it is. But as we said, there's room for an instruction in between these two loads, these first two loads. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the first instruction from um, the first independent instruction, since these four instructions are all dependent, I'm going to hoist up this load. And as a forward reference, we can only do this if we know that doing this is in fact safe, that, that this isn't going to dereference a null pointer. And so the question was very careful to say that that was a, f a fair thing to assume. Now that we've done that, we can put in the original second instruction because now that we've tolerated that one, the data hazard, um, it's safe to issue this instruction that we've, we're now not going to achieve a stall. But now we have another slot that could potentially um, cause a stall between this original second and third instruction. Um, so we're going to pull up the next instruction from the second loop, or I guess the first instruction from the second loop, this load. Load word into T4 of 0 A1. So again, that one's not going to stall either because it has this other instruction in between um, those two. So we're actually going to keep sort of alternating back and forth between the, the first iteration and the second iteration. So now we're going to go back and take uh, the third instruction from the first iteration, load word into T3, a zero offset of T2, and then take the second instruction of the second iteration, load into T5, zero offset of T4. Um, and then we get to the branch. So we're safe to put the branch in there. And as we, by design, we haven't modified the value of A0, so if we, if we take this branch to exit, A0 is going to have its correct value. Um, and if not, then we fall through and we can continue doing the work of the second iteration. So we'll pull this third instruction from the second iteration because we've actually already executed the whole first iteration. Now all we have to do is finish the second iteration. Um, so that's a load into T6 of a zero offset from T5. Before the branch, we need to put in this move. And it turns out this move isn't going to cost us anything because since the branch is dependent on the right of T6, um, we would have had to stall a cycle before we did this branch anyway. And so that move sits in there and doesn't cost us anything. And then we can just copy these last two instructions and we are all good for offset of A1 and a jump back to the loop header. So this is still has the label loop. So the second part of the question asks how much faster is this new code than the original unro uh, not unrolled code? And so what I've done is I've taken this code and I've used it to fill out the performance grid as shown and it's really not that interesting because since we've eliminated all of the stalls we can see that we have one instruction 
executing every cycle, one instruction writing back every cycle, so on and so forth, until we get to the loop, and again, because branches are predicted as not taken, the, we'll fetch the move into V0 the following cycle after the loop, and then at the end of the ID stage, we'll recognize that this is in fact an unconditional branch, and we know what the target is, and so we can go ahead and squash the move and fetch the correct um, instruction, the first instruction of the, the loop in that same next cycle. And so there's two ways we could look at this, that there's that we know there's no stalls, and we know that there's one flush per iteration, and the iteration consists of 12 instructions. So the 12 instructions plus one flush gives us 13 cycles. Alternatively, we could say, okay, here's the right backstage of the first instruction of iteration n, and here's the right back of the first instruction of iteration n plus one, and if I look at the same time for both these instructions, I can avoid that double counting that we want to avoid. We just count the cycles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. We get that same thirteen number. So we know it takes 13 cycles to do the work of two iterations in the original program. And so our speed up is going to be the time it took for each iteration in the original code. That was 10 cycles. And then the time for each iteration in the new code, that's 13 over 2 cycles. And if we do a little arithmetic, we get that the new code is 1.45 times faster.